So hello, um, welcome. My name is Jeff Taylor and I'm here today interviewing Dr. Joel Pilewski from the University of California in San Francisco. Dr. Pilewski is one of the leading researchers in the area of um, AIDS-related HPV cancer and we're very grateful to have him here today. Thank you, Dr. Pilewski, for coming. My pleasure, Jeff. And uh, why don't you start by telling us um, kind of what um, work you do and what the AMC is and how they, how they relate. Certainly. So I'm the chair of the Human Papillomavirus Working Group for the AIDS Malignancy Consortium. And we focus on diseases, precancers and cancers that are associated with infection with human papillomavirus. This is a small DNA virus that infects a very high proportion of people who've been sexually active. It infects it in the cervix, causing cervical cancer. It causes infection in the anal canal, causing anal neoplasia, which is a cancer precursor and anal cancer, and is responsible for about a quarter of oral cancers. These cancers, particularly cervical cancer, are amongst the most common cancers that occur in HIV-positive individuals. And the focus of our group is largely on anal HPV infection and anal cancer. So the group uh, does a variety of different studies to determine the best way to treat some of these lesions. Uh, and we're also looking at the new HPV quadrivalent vaccine to see if it might be helpful in HIV positive people. Now, I understand you had a poster that you presented at this, uh, this conference. Would you like to talk to us about sure. that? So uh, anal cancer is one of the cancers that unfortunately has not gone down in incidence since the introduction of antiretroviral therapy. Unlike Kaposi sarcoma or non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, anal cancer appears to actually be increasing in incidence despite antiretroviral therapy. The cancer precursor, as I mentioned, we think is called anal intraepithelial neoplasia and a particular version of that called high-grade anal intraepithelial neoplasia. And when you look at how commonly high-grade anal disease occurs, it's found to be in roughly one half of all HIV positive people. So if this lesion is truly a cancer precursor, then it implies that we really need to be paying attention to diagnosing it and treating it if possible to prevent the cancers. Until this point, actually nobody has clearly demonstrated that the high grade lesion truly is the area from which the cancers arise. And so what we did at University of California in San Francisco was look through our records for our anal neoplasia clinic and looked at the people who had developed anal cancer <clears throat> over the last 10 years or so. This was work done with my colleagues, uh, Michael Berry and Naomi Jay and Terry Dara. And what we showed, in fact, was that in at least uh, 22 cases, we could show direct progression from those high-grade lesions to invasive cancer. In our minds, this very clearly shows that the lesion has the potential to progress to cancer. Uh, the good news is that only a small proportion of those over time are going to progress to cancer. We need to understand better which ones will progress and which ones won't. But for the moment, uh, we believe at the anal neoplasia clinic at UCSF that it's important to treat as many of them as possible to lower the risk of, of developing anal cancer. The other interesting thing is that we found in um, in this analysis was that for people who developed a newly high-grade lesion while we were taking care of them, the time for progression from that lesion to invasive cancer was roughly five years. And uh, the majority of them were inside the anal canal, where people may be less aware of them than on the outside part of the anus. And perhaps most importantly, about 90% of them were felt with a finger, hmm. with a procedure that most doctors and other clinicians know how to do, which is called the Digital Rectal Examination, or DRE. And this is a very important point because although we think it's important for people to be doing anal cytology screening and high-resolution anoscopy, which is the next step, to diagnose the lesion and determine where to treat it, these are techniques that are difficult to do in terms of time required and expertise required. So they're not commonly available yet in the United States, but the digital rectal exam is, and until people are in a position to be able to do anal cytology and high-resolution anoscopy, we believe that everybody, every HIV-positive person, be they men or women, 
should have a digital rectal examination to feel for early cancers, mm -hmm. at least on an annual basis. So when you talk about anal disease, many people think that it's exclusively a, a problem for, for gay men, and you mentioned that this is important for women as well. That's Would you correct. Would like to expand on that? Yes. Uh, so most people typically focus on cervical HPV infection and cervical cancer in women quite appropriately. But interestingly, the studies that our group has done over the years has shown that uh, in HIV-positive women and in high-risk HIV-negative women, that is, women who have a history of commercial sex work or injection drug use, we find that there's more anal HPV infection than there is cervical HPV infection. And not surprisingly, we find more anal intraepithelial neoplasia than cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. Although HIV-positive women aren't as high at risk for anal cancer as HIV-positive MSM are, their risk is still roughly sevenfold higher than the general population for anal cancer. So let me give you an idea of what some of these numbers actually look like. Uh, and to put it into context, uh, we usually compare it to cervical cancer since that's the standard disease. Uh, in the United States, prior to the introduction of routine cervical pap smear screening, the incidence of cervical cancer was about 40 to 50 per 100,000. So every year, out of every 100,000 women, 40 to 50 will develop cervical cancer. Since the introduction of pap smear screening, that rate has come down to about 8 per 100,000. So the identification of the high-grade cervical precursor through pap smear screening and the treatment of it before progression to cervical cancer is what led to this very substantial decline. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the incidence of anal cancer in men who have sex with men prior to the onset of the HIV epidemic, it was shown to be as high as 35 per 100,000. So in MSM, who presumably get HPV largely, though not necessarily exclusively, through anal intercourse, the incidence was as high as it was in cervical cancer in the general population of women before we were screening. Mm -hmm. Then you throw HIV in on top of that, and uh, the incidence has been shown to be roughly 100 per 100,000 in this population. So the incidence of anal cancer in HIV-positive MSM right now, we think, is about 10 times higher than the incidence of cervical cancer in the general population of women. Why is that? High rate of HPV infection, high rate of high-grade anal intraepithelial neoplasia, people living longer, because of the benefits of antiretroviral therapy, so more time for the high-grade lesion to progress, and the absence of screening. So people are having a lesion there, living longer, more time to progress, but nothing is being done because nobody's looking. So the focus, for instance, of the HPV working group is not only to um, try and develop better methods for treating those high-grade lesions once you find them, but to try and lay the groundwork for a uh, screening program if the data are consistent with a positive benefit and ultimately the adoption of this practice, anal cytology screening, as standard of care for high-risk individuals. And those high-risk people would include HIV-positive men who have sex with men, HIV-negative men who have sex with men, HIV-positive women, uh, women with a history of receptive anal intercourse, uh, men and women with perianal warts, because mm -hmm. if you have HPV infection on the outside and warts are one manifestation of HPV, you're likely to have something on the inside. Women with a history of cervical or vulvar cancer, because HPV is what we call a field infection. It infects both the genital region in the front, the cervix, the vulva, the vagina, and the perianal and anal area, and in men, the penis and scrotum and the anal area. So if women have signs of HPV infection in the vulva or vagina, that's close enough to the anus where it puts it in pretty, puts the anal canal at pretty high risk. Uh, in addition, other forms of immunosuppression may lead to increased risk. So if an individual has, say, a solid organ transplant and they're being immunosuppressed by their doctors from medication, with medication, then uh, they may be at increased risk. And in fact, there is a growing number of HIV-positive individuals who are also undergoing solid organ transplant. And there is a national study of such individuals in which we are participating to look at the prevalence of infection and cancer precursors in 
HIV-positive transplanted individuals.